Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also to encourage experienced painters to paint along with me. And today we're gonna to finish up the final fire on our violets. So this is how my second coat turned out. And as you can see, most of the background is blue. And both of my second coats, because I do two boxes, as you know, turned out exactly the same way. So I wanted you to be able to see how it turned out so that you could get a really good idea of where we're starting from today. Now, I wanted a more dramatic box and I wanted it to have more reds, like a red violet or a berry with it. So this is how I finished the box I'm going to be keeping. And this is how it turned out. Amazing, huh? And it started out exactly the same as the piece I showed you just before this. And the other thing I did with this is I did my, my the bottom part of my box, this part of my box, the same way. So that the box really looks nice when it's all together. You can see there, yeah. So, um... I want to talk to you a little bit about the palette that I used and the technique, and it's going to be very simple. Any beginner can do this technique, no problem. Um, we're going to be using, um, here's my palette, a yellow, a yellow red. Um, on every, both of these uh, boxes, I use the same palette, um, the blue-black, berry, and down here we have a violet, a royal violet and a white. And we're also going to use a sponge. Now, Candy sent me these lovely little sponges. This is one of those makeup sponges that you can get. Um, geez, um, I think I found them at uh, one of the local, you know, drug stores. You can also use another sponge, which is the triangle sponge. That's the kind I have been using up until Candy gave me this. And today I try thought I would try that. And I, I really do like it, Candy, so thank you very much. But this one I like because you can cut it up and use it, you know, use a couple of pieces of it and over, your, you know, they're relatively cheap. You get a bag, I think, at the dollar store. So, um, and you just, you just sponge it on. So that worked very well for me. So you can use either of these sponges depending on what you have available at home. All right, so this is what we're starting with. And it's, as you can see, I'm gonna hold it up really close and I'm going to pump the light a little more. I think that might help. There we go. The um, This is blue-black, and then this is what we did last time. So these little uh, more purpley uh, red colors are the berry on it. Okay. So we're going to start right out using our sponge. And... Um, I would caution you about putting oil on your sponge I had um, too much oil on my sponge at one point, and one of my boxes, the side dripped when I took it down to put it into the um, kiln. And when it was setting in the kiln, it dripped. So don't put too much oil on your sponge. Don't use oil if you don't have to. What I have here are freshly mixed paints, and I found that that works the best, especially for the side of the box. But for any of them, if you have too much oil, it's going to run. Okay, so we're going to start out. I'm just going to dip it into my blue-black. And I'm going to do my blue-black all around the edges. Like this. And the blue-black, you can bring up into the middle a little more. What you try to do, you see on my sponge... One side of my sponge is what I use with my paint, and the other side of my sponge is what I don't use with my paint. And uh, that way I can kind of come in and, um, oops, I can kind of come in and I can make the areas where I'm trying to fade it off into the center lighter without using the side that has the paint on it. But like I said, I would recommend you start by having fresh paint that you've mixed today. Don't, uh, and that way it'll be, um, it'll have a nice oil in it already and you won't have to add oil so you won't have any problem with it dripping. Okay. 
And if it doesn't work for you very well, then you may have to get a little oil and you may have to put a little on your tile and then pick it up with your, with your sponge. Or you can just use your um, paintbrush and put it right on your tile. So I'm just, I'm just pouncing, really. That's all I'm doing. I'm just pouncing. And I'm being careful not to pounce. Uh, and it would work better if I had it on a flat surface so that it wasn't shaking when I, every time I pounce it. But you get the main idea here. And then I'm going to take, I try not to pounce on my leaves. But if I do, I can use the side of the sponge to get some of that paint off. And I try not to pounce on my main violets. I, I try to use some restraint there so that I'm not messing them up. So, okay. And then I'm using the side of my sponge now, oops, there, to sort of blend in as we go towards the center without losing the, the smoothness that I have from the sponging. And remember, you want to do it all the way around the sides, too. You might want to have a spatula or something handy so that you can um, pick it up and move it when you're done. Um, I found that that is probably the more difficult part. And you just keep rotating this until you get it exactly the way you want it. If you need to, you can wipe the sponge off so that you don't have as much paint on it, just like you do with a brush. And that will also work to help you take off some of the, some of the paint and make it, you know, more even. Now, that's a blue version, but I want a little purple in it, especially around the edges, because I want it to be able to sort of blend into the lower part of this. So I'm going to use my royal violet or you can use now you can use a royal violet, you can use a violet, you can use um geez. Um a pansy purple. You know, whatever color you have available. And I'm just taking it and putting it around the edges kind of where I think I like it. Now I haven't cleaned my um I haven't cleaned my sponge, I'm just sponging. And you can go up as close to the flowers as you want, but I would recommend that you not go too close. You're gonna lose a lot of the detail that you work so hard on. And again, wipe off that sponge a little bit. I'm just twisting this sponge and go back and you can blend that in. I don't think we've done this technique. I've got some, hang on, I got a couple there that are, uh, there we go. Okay, I got a couple that were kind of grainy or not, not mixing in the way I wanted them to, so I had to take a minute and get them off. Make sure that your paint is not mixed too coarsely. You want to make sure you get all those little grains out when you're mixing your paint if you're using fresh mixed paint because any of those little grains will leave a dark spot on your china. Okay, so this isn't hard, right? And let me show you what this looks like now. Ooh, let me just get this section here. Now, I keep getting my fingers in it. Um, I have been using my turntable for this kind of thing. And it's worked out very well. Let me show you my turntable. I have a turntable like this. And it um, the back has a, a hinge on it. And you can undo it and make it lower so it's totally flat. Or you can raise it. And you can put it wherever you want to use it. 
Let me move this so you can see. You can put it wherever you want to use it. And then when you put your piece on it, and this is what I mean about maybe needing, see, you can go around it like this. And it, it's so much easier to control what you're putting down on, on the piece. So that might be something. You can even use a Lazy Susan that you bought, you know, like just a regular Lazy Susan. And, and it's flat. And you get those at the store and you can use those and it'll do the same thing for you and give you the same effect. So, okay. All righty. So those are my violets, the way I want them done. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup and just ignore these areas around the side. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on my, um, oh, hang on. I do want a little more dark here. There we go. One more purple. Not quite that dark, so let's back it off a little. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to go in and clean up some of the areas that I've covered, obviously. Um, I'm going to take my little brush, the little number four with the rounded top, dip it in a little turpentine, and I'm just going to go and kind of wipe out some of these that I want to make sure have a little bit of color on them. Yeah, some of these I worked hard on it to get them shaded just right, and I don't want them to not show up. Oh, you may have to put a little oil on that just to keep it from messing up your background. And then I'm just going to clean out these two main violets that I have there and up here. And I'm oops, might take a minute here and just clean out a little bit. I have a violet over here, and I'm just going to clean that guy out, clean the bottom out, clean the top, just a little bit. I may even put some white on it and do a little bit of white to try to bring the, the flower out a little more, and you can do that if you need to. What do you think so far? I love the way the background ends up looking on this. You can really see here how that white really helped bring out that, that little violet there. Okay, and if you want to do it a little down here, you can do that too. Okay. Then you're going to go back in, make sure you've cleaned out your centers, and just redo the center of your violets. We'll get a number one, and we're going to do it with the yellow. And then I'm going to get my pointer, go into the yellow red, and just put the yellow red back in. and. Um, Eloise was saying she had trouble with the yellow red staying there. The reason you have trouble is because it fires out. It takes, usually by the time you get the third coat on, you're finally getting the yellow red to stick. And that's kind of part of that. So, alrighty. Now, I still use a silk or my finger to kind of clean up wherever I feel I need to do some blending. So you, if you have a silk, that's fine. Um, I understand there's paper towel now. Somebody said Viva works just as well to kind of help you blend it a little more into the background. And that's what you end up with. So now you have, this one is, um, oh, I'm sorry. There's one other thing I do. I take a little berry and I just go back in and redo some of these little tickies that are back here so that they can stand out a little more. And you may not want them done in berry. I'm doing these in berry down here. 
You may want them done in a more of a blue, and you can do them in a more of a blue if you prefer. Remember, you want them to kind of look like little violets. If they get too dark, let me show you what you can do. Let's say you do this one and it comes out really dark. Tap it with your finger. That will take the edge off and also help it look pretty nice. If you prefer, you can do these with a purple, with the blue purple or with the blue, and this is the way they would look. Oops, that's a little dark. Okay, so let's get it here. And that's how those look over in this side. These are the ones that I've done. And I've done them with the blue, with the purple. I did it with a royal violet and just did a few of them right here. So you may prefer that or you may prefer this. It just depends what you want to do. So for this one, you're using blue, black, and you're using either a, a royal violet, a violet, or a pansy purple, whatever you have available. For this one, you use a blue-black, and then you use a berry. And I took a berry and went around and did all these little tickies, the, the shadowy kind of violets, in the berry. But I used everything else I did the same. I put a little white on my violets, and I went through and redid the centers one more time. If you feel that your leaves need um, a stem, uh, you know, need more veins or more color, you can do that. But you don't really have to. Now, on this one, I'm very happy with the way these turned out. Those are the secondary um, um, secondary leaves. But if I wanted to, I could go in. You can even use a, a little bit of the, the blue-black and just go back here and add a little color so that you have a little more separation and the, these violets stand out a little more. And the blue-black on a green leaf really adds a lot of drama and it soaks right into the green so you really don't even notice that it's a, a blue black. And then on the very edge of this one here, I think I would do that. And remember, I would have this on my um, Lazy Susan so that I could work with it. And <laughs> here's my looking for this guy. I think I might want to put a turn back there. That's a little dramatic. So I would, oops, just brush it a little bit to get the, get the color out of there so it's not quite so um, bright. There we go. Okay. All right, so that's, that's the top of this box. And like I said, I use the blue-black and the violets. Now on this one, I did exactly the reverse, then I used the blue-black and the berry and the berry. And you could use the violet if you wanted, so it's up to you. You have two different options for two totally different boxes. And then the bottom of the box, I found that if you try to pounce the whole bottom of the box, you're going to lose your hand, especially if it's this deep. So I found a nice brush that works really well for me. But and I would put the colors on. With a little bit of oil, not too much, because like I said, you get down here on the box and if you put too much oil on the box, it, I will tell you on the sides, it will run when it goes into the kiln. And then you're going to add your royal purple like this.
And this is another piece. I would turn it upside down and I would probably, you know, I would start on the top and then I would flip it and do it on my um, um, Lazy Susan. I'm going to take the same brush and I'm just going to start pouncing. Can you see what I'm doing here? Yep, I think you can. And then if you decide you want um, a little berry in there, you can add a little berry. And just blend it in. And this brush, this uh, sponge is great for that. The other sponges work just as well. Um, I found that doing the side took me two fires to get the depth I wanted. I also found that with the with the berry, I needed um, one fire like this. And then I went back and a lot of the edging um, fired out. So then I ended up having to go back and put a little more of the darkness in there. Now, this is great. If you're a choppy painter, you'll love this because you can be a choppy painter and then just go over it again, like I said, and just mix it all together. And this will probably need two fires on the outside of the box. So when you get them together, always put the lid on. Now, I'm just going to dip right in the paint here. I noticed that the top of my box is a little more um, blue, so I just added more blue. And the lighter you do it, the fewer marks you have from the sponge on the piece. Okay, let me put the two together so you can see what they look like. So this is what this box would look like. Alrighty, so that's it. There's not a whole lot to finishing off these boxes. Obviously, um, you know, follow the steps if you want to go through and add more of the little tickies back. You can see on this top. So here, here's the finished box. Oops, you can see how the color on the bottom. Oh, let me get it closer here. The color on the bottom and the color on the top go very well together. I wanted to show you one other thing, and I've got my fingers all over it now, but down here, I did these little guys over on both sides. Up here, I did not. So you can see they aren't quite as well defined, but I think this one, because the bottom, you can see especially here, the well-defined little shadow violets, I think it looks so much nicer than this side where you don't have any of that. So I would go back and make sure I put that in on this side. But right now, all you're seeing on this side is my fingerprints because I've been picking it up too much. Thank you very much for joining me and I hope that you will get out those brushes and keep painting. Alrighty, bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.